The northbound Red Sea Passage is at least 1,300 nautical miles and does not include the Gulf of Aden, 650 nautical miles, or at least the 1,000 nautical miles crossing the Indian Ocean to get to the Gulf of Aden. Total, you will travel well over 3,000 nautical miles from the time you leave Tanzania, Seychelles, or the Maldives before you pass through the Suez Canal and arrive in the Mediterranean. The winds will most likely be against you in the Red Sea, unless you have three things in your favor. You have plenty of time to wait for good weather, your weather planning is stellar, and you have a lot of luck. Let's talk about the do's and don'ts of making the Red Sea Passage. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. The first thing is to get your boat in tip-top condition. Spend more time worrying about the engine, transmission, running rigging, standing rigging, and sails than worrying about all those pirates you've heard so much about. You probably will be on a sailboat, but you will be using your engine a lot. So make sure before you leave Tanzania, Maldives, or Seychelles, you have changed all your engine fluids and your engine is in great shape. Inspect the running rigging, standing rigging, and make sure you have plenty of spares. Everything should be in tip-top condition in order to have a smooth Red Sea Passage from the Indian Ocean north to the Med. More boats are lost because of a system failure, engine or standing rigging, etc., that could have been repaired before setting sail than pirates. Carry at least 10 primary fuel filters. We have a dual Raycor filter set up. And carry five fuel filters for your engine. If you get bad fuel, you can go through filters quickly. Though we have not had any problems with bad fuel, it's always better to be prepared. You should also have oil filters, impellers, and enough oil for at least two engine servicings while crossing. You can get oil in Socotra, Djibouti, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt, but it's always better to have everything on board for at least two oil changes during the Red Sea Passage. Weather. I like to use OpenCPN to do my passage planning, and you will see that OpenCPN is a very useful and free program. Historical winds, current, and storm data so you can look at historical wind average for each day of the year. This information will give you a good understanding of weather patterns throughout the year wherever in the world you might be planning a passage. You should also check out my video on how to make satellite overlays for your OpenCPN and one more video, how I used OpenCPN to plan my crossing from Tanzania to Sukutra. Links below or up top. In my opinion, there are six parts to the Red Sea crossing. Getting to the entrance of the Gulf of Aden or Sukutra. Some come from Tanzania like us in Zatara. Some come from the Seychelles and some come from the Maldives. You really have to look at the weather for the time of year you're planning. The Indian is also known for strong currents, so make sure you check out where the currents are as well for the time of year you're sailing in the Indian Ocean. As you can see, if you are sailing from the Maldives, looks like January 15th, February, March, Seychelles to Tanzania, late September to early October. The locals in Sukutra say the weather changes drastically after October 10th. The saying in Sukutra is, winds die, 
1010 at the tips. Unless you want to see 50 knots of wind like us when you arrive, arrive after October 10th. I have to include one thing, the Maldives Rally. The Maldives Rally is a wonderful way to see the Maldives. They will check you in and show you the real Maldives. If it's at all possible, do it. Sign up now for 2024. A link is below. 2. The Gulf of Aden, Sukutra to Djibouti. Wait for a good weather window and you have a better chance of a downwind sail after October 15th till the middle of April. 3. South Red Sea November to March 4. The North Red Sea The wind will most likely be on your nose most of the time while traveling north. Find places where you might be able to hide out if you can't motor against the wind. You will need good weather forecast for this part of the journey. 5. The Gulf of Suez Again, you will need good weather forecasts. Most of the time, the wind will be on your nose. Suez Canal You'll be motoring for about 15 hours over two days. It's against the law to sail while transiting the Suez Canal. Wind will probably not be a factor, but you will need to make sure you don't break down. We changed our oil in Jordan and motored about 20 hours on the oil before entering the Suez Canal. Check your engine often during the crossing. Go down and take a look at your engine a few times a day. Register with at least one of the military groups. I registered with MSCHOA and you will need to send them position reports every 12 hours while in the danger zones. This area was taken off the danger zones January 1, 2023, but the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea up to the Saudi Arabia-Yemeni border are still danger zones. Currently, there are civil wars in Sudan and Yemen, so be careful next to these countries. Stay close to the shipping lanes. There are plenty of ships in the Red Sea and probably a few that could be at your side in a few hours. Agents. Try to find agents in all countries. Yemen, Eritrea, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan. If you're going up the Gulf of Aqaba. Israel, you probably not need an agent. Send all an email with your information so that they can check you in if required. Ask your agent for all costs associated with checking in and out of the country, how long you can stay without additional fees, required visas, where the best place to check in, coordinates of the best anchorage upon first arrival, all documents required for check-in. After you get a response and all the documents have been sent to the agent, Tell him the approximate date that you may arrive and ask his opinion about safety of the port. Do this for all countries, even if you're not planning to go to one of the countries. Keep all your options open in case of an emergency. If you do have an emergency, one of those agents might become your best friend. Documents It's sometimes difficult to send documents with limited internet. So, send all your documents to a friend. In case of an emergency, a friend can forward your documents to the authorities. Better if the person you choose has knowledge of check-in procedures so they can negotiate on your behalf if necessary. Docs to include, but not limited to, crew list, crew passport copies, boat registration, insurance documents, and last, custom clearance. Here are some of the costs that we've seen. These are not exact, but you have a good idea. Have between 2000 and 5000 US dollars on your boat so that you can pay some people in cash. Things not to do. Don't get frightened by boats. 
just keep your distance. You may come across fishing vessels, but your chances of meeting up with a pirate is about the same as meeting up with Johnny Depp. Just be calm and call MSCHOA if the boat comes too close. Once you are registered, the military agencies will respond quickly if you have a problem. We had a boat approach us between Sukutra and Djibouti. Once we told the military agency about the boat approaching, they responded immediately, telling us to let them know if there's any danger. The boat passed without incident, and we informed the military agency that we were no longer worried about the vessel being close to us. I was talking to a captain that was in a bar in Djibouti, and this was about four or five months before we went through the Red Sea. And he said he was talking to this one guy that said he was a pirate. He said every once in a while the insurance companies hire him to go out and scare a couple boats so that they can keep the insurance rates high in the area. Now, I don't know if the story is true or not, but in the last 12 years I only know of one attack on a small vessel and that was in 2011. Cheers. Have a good time in the Red Sea. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those. They said they came from Spanish. Oh.